Hello guys, welcome. So, today we're going to be talking about RNG in uh, Warframe. Most specifically, RNG relating to the Void Relic system. So, you know, as a fair warning, there's gonna be a lot of mathematics involved in this. So, be sure to expect the worst if you're not really into that stuff. So, some stuff I think that it would be good to mention before we start. Although RNG is not entirely random, because you know it's just formulas and algorithms, so technically you can predict them, but we are going to treat them as such. Because you know, there's a lot of hidden variables that affect the system, one possibly being the time that the uh, algorithm was called, because there's a technique where you take the time to seed the uh, random number generator. So yeah, in theory you can predict them, but in practice you can't, so we'll take them as being completely random, and we'll go from there. So first, let's clarify some notions. The notion of a probability distribution. So a, what a probability distribution is, is that it sort of assigns a probability value to every outcome of an event. So it has uh, also some very neat properties that the sum of all the probabilities has to equal to 1, 100%. You cannot exceed this simply because it just doesn't make sense to do so. Otherwise you'll be getting lots of funny results that, you know, don't really make sense. Yes, so another feature that probability distributions have is something called an expectation value or expected value or expected number or whatever. And this loosely refers to the, the average outcome, so to speak. Meaning, as you try and try and try, the most common outcome, that's the, act the expectation value. So, and mathematically it's sort of defined as being the sum of each outcome weighted by its probability. Another thing that I think would be very good to cover while we're at this is the variance of a probability distribution. So, what this is, again very loosely, is a sort of value that shows how much the events tend to spread out around the expectation value. Meaning, if you have a large variance, and for example, the expected value is 3, it means that you can have a lot of the values that come out to be 10, 100, you know. The smaller the variance, it means that the events tend to approach more the expectation value, if that makes sense. Okay, so now let's take an example to sort of implement what we've just covered. So, let's for example take an intact relic where you can receive a common drop 76% of the time, an uncommon drop 22% of the time, and the rare drop 2% of the time. Now, let's keep in mind, we're doing this for a sort of ducket farm model. So, for every common item, irrelevant which one it is, we get 15 ducats, for an uncommon item we get 45, and for the rare we get 100 ducats. Now, for this example, it would be much easier to consider relics like the Lith F2 relic that has no formal drops in it, so anything you can potentially trade to buy or hit here. So, for, for this we get a probability distribution that looks a little bit like this, where it sort of tapers off the higher it gets. Now, for this one we can calculate an expectation value. For this it would be the expected number of ducats we can earn each run. So if we use the formula we defined before and work it out, we get that on average from each run we get 23.3 ducats. In rounding you get 23 or 24, somewhere in between. And if we calculate now the variance, we find that it varies at around 273 or so ducats. This is exactly what I said, it has a very high variance, so it can potentially fluctuate very hard around the expectation value. So this is why most people you know, complain that oh, I never get anything good or oh wow, I got it on the first run. So you know, that's the height of the variance in action. Okay, so for now, let's sort of forget about this, but we'll get back to it later. So let's tackle the problem from a different light, because it would be nice to know, for example, how many runs would it take me to get that part 
or a part of that rarity. So we are gonna keep this notion of grouping like rarities together and we're gonna take a look at something that statisticians call the geometric distribution. What this basically is, is that you sort of model lots of tries and the distribution gives you the probability of getting a success on that particular try. So for example, if I'm flipping coins, it gives you the probability that I get a heads after 7 tries, for example. So, for now, just take my word for it, alright? The expectation value of this distribution is uh, 1 over the probability of success, which will denote by small p, and the variance is 1 minus p over p squared. So, the most important thing here is the expectation value. The variance is, you know, just gonna be a super big number, like always. So, if we work out the expectation value of that relic we analyzed, we see that we get the common drop after about one try, which is not that surprising, let's be honest. We get the uncommon drop after about five tries, remember this is an intact relic, and we get the rare drop after about 50 tries. So, if we do this for all tiers of relics, and we do the previous test we did with the ducats for all tiers of relics, you know, intact, flawless, uh, intact, flawless, I, I don't know, the radiant, you know, all of those, we get this sort of table that says, you know, for example, for an intact relic, the average ducat earnings would be 23.3, 26.2 for an exceptional, 30.3 for flawless, and 35.5 for radium. And as you can see, the variance just keeps getting larger and larger and larger and larger. So, with this latter test that we sort of, the latter model that we defined with the geometric distribution, we get that with a radiant, you get the rare part after around 10 or so tries, and you get the uncommon after around 3, and the common after around 2 tries. And you know, there is for all the relics, I you can just see the table, I won't sort of talk about them all. So, after this, I, I sort of thought, well, I'm gonna have a hard time convincing everyone that this is actually, these numbers are actually valid. So I took the ducket model and decided to uh, run a sort of simulation. So I generated random numbers from 1 to 100, partitioned them such that for the numbers from 1 to 76 outputs 15, from 76 to 22 more, it outputs 45, and for the last 2% it outputs 100. So I did that for tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 and tier 4, and I forgot how much it was, I think 1000 tries, and then just averaged each one and took the variance. And as you can see, the expectation for the simulation and the variance are within a respectable margin of error of the calculated ones. So that sort of goes to show that our model is, you know, at least decent. And yeah, we can predict uh, quite decently what happens. Okay, now, it uh, it is hardly ever the case that one runs these missions solo. So uh, let's try and tweak our model a little bit so it can accommodate a four-person squad. Or from now on, we'll, we'll be calling a four-squad for, you know, it's less of a mouthful. So, to have an idea where we're going with this, when I first started looking at this, I had absolutely no clue how to do it. And, you know, while sort of waiting for some inspiration, I decided to run the simulation first and then derive the model. So, I ran sort of a copy of the first simulation four times, because you know, each relic has an independent outcome, and then routed those into a choice function where it chooses the highest valued item from the set of outcomes. For example, if you have a common, common, uncommon and a common, it chooses the uncommon. So, you know, it, it goes like that. Then I averaged it, the average, the choice this time, not the others. Averaged them and got the variance as usual. The variance is extremely high and the 
expected value is, uh, you know, between 40, sort of, to 60 in that region. So, yeah, then I uh, started to look at the these, and yeah, I decided to count the number of possibilities in which it can appear. So you can have, uh, for example, common, common, uncommon, common, common, rare, common, 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 and all that stuff. So, in total, you have three possible outcomes, and uh, this and you have three possible outcomes per relic. So that's three times three times three times three. That's three to the four, which is eight to one. This doesn't really say anything, you know. We want the probabilities of individual sort of outcomes. I mean, what's the probability of common, 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 rare? And what's the probability of common, 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 uncommon? What's the probability of common, common, uncommon, uncommon? And so on. So, before we head into this, I think it would be beneficial to define some concepts in combinatorics. Like, for example, the choose function. The choose function, basically, you sort of give it the set that you have to choose from, the amount of objects, and then you give it also how much you want to choose, and it gives you the number of ways that you can do it. So, if for choosing k objects from a set of n objects, we get the following, which is n factorial over k factorial, n minus k factorial. Another important thing to note is the factorial is, for example, x factorial. It's basically x times x minus 1 times x minus 2, and so on, until you get down to 3 times 2 times 1. All, you take all the numbers that are smaller than x and multiply them with x find it in a simple manner. Another function that's useful to take note of is the permutation function. This basically is similar to the choose function, but it sort of tells you in what different orders you can choose the items. And since it's very similar, it will define it in terms of the choose function, which is k factorial times n choose k. Okay, so then I sort of took the unique combinations. Meaning, uh, for example, I considered the rare, common, common, common the same as common, rare, common, common, and the same as common, common, rare, common, and so on. So from those, you basically get, well, I don't know, about 15, I think it was 15 different combinations, and then sort of looked in the depths of them and looked for the pattern in each one. So, for example, the one where they're all the same, you know, there's one, only one permutation of that, which is as it is. The one which has all the same except for one means there's four different permutations of that one, meaning the, the odd one out can be in first, second, third and fourth place. For the ones that differ by only two, and those two are the same, which is important, there are six ways to arrange them. For the ones that differ by only two, and those two are distinct, there are twelve ways. Again, here we're using the permutation function. We have a collection of four, and we're only permuting two. We're choosing two that we're permuting. And you know, the cases are all similar, and if you take the permutation column that I'm showing up on the screen right now, and you add all of those values up, surprise, surprise, there are 81 combinations, as we said before. So, you know, that sort of eliminates the possibility that there is a mistake, the fact that we got 81 again. So, then I took the sort of I took the probability of each and every one of those by taking you know probability of the first one times the probability of the second one times the third times the fourth and then to find the probability of that combination I sort of multiplied the the probability of the permutation by the number of permutations giving me the probability of the combination and then you know I did this for intact exceptional flawless and Radiant, and then I summed together the ones that had well there's only one that had the the common as its highest so that just remains as it is the ones that had the uncommon as their highest I summed their probabilities and the ones that had rare as their highest I summed their probabilities again so we get new probability sort of distributions for a four squad so now, with these new uh, probabilities that we have obtained, we can update the previous tests and we see that 
for the ducat model, the, the values vary from around 40 to 60, as, as what we got from the simulation. So that just means that, well, you know, it's about right. So yeah, it's decent as a model. So now, let's take it to the number of tries model, one with the geometric distribution. And to my surprise, and this honestly really surprised me, the expected number of tries for a 4 squad of 4 radiant relics to get the rare is only 3. Granted, the uh, variance is probably enormous. I estimate it's about uh, 34, probably about 1000, but who cares. Uh, <laughs> mm. So yeah, and it's also good to note how drastically the expected number of tries for a common drop blows up for the radiance. So, you know. And also, the for an intact relic, the expected number of tries of the rare has gone down significantly from 50 to 13, which is... which it sort of brought it into a manageable range, rather than the... Who, who the hell would run 50 runs, you know? I doubt anyone even has 50 relics of most relics, but 13 is a bit more manageable, I think. So yeah, just running in a squad, it's always good. That's it, thanks for watching, and here is the proof for the expected value of the geometry distribution.